Crochet is a process of creating textiles by using a crochet hook to interlock loops of yarn, thread or strands of other materials. The name is derived from the old French term crochet meaning small hook. Hooks can be made from a variety of materials such as metal, wood, bamboo or plastic. People used this term in making French lace in the 1600s. Crochet evolved in the early 1700s when tambourine reached Europe after going through India, Persia, North America, Turkey, North Africa and other places around the world. The French named the new technique crochet in the air. Although it is hard to narrow down the origins and who invented crocheting, the most reliable link to its development is through a unique Chinese embroidery technique or the French method, tambourine. A French crocheter born in 1829, Mademoiselle Riego de la Branchardier, wrote the first crochet pattern. She also wrote and published crochet and knitting books. Despite Mademoiselle Riego de la Branchardier being French, she is credited for the invention of Irish crochet. It became a prevalent method of crochet and still is today. As regards the lucrativeness of this craft, there is no better time than now to take action. Crocheting can be profitable if you put in the passion and the energy to make it work for you. In this day and age, you can market your crochet merchandise locally and even abroad with huge thanks to technology. Growing up as a girl in Nigeria means one thing, learning to work the hands into beautiful crafts ranging from cooking to braiding hair to tailoring or it could simply even mean knitting with a silver pin and a woolly thread. On today's episode of Showcase, we meet with Farida Ibrahim, a self-taught crocheter who shows the world that it's possible to make a living out of crocheting. Let's meet her. I am a crocheter. Uh, basically, not just a crocheter, a handcrafter. I do a lot of things that are not just crochet, like sewing, but I'm more focused on crocheting, especially bags. For crocheting in general, it's just the love of seeing my baby in crochet wears. I saw when I was pregnant with my baby and I saw a lot of things that were made for babies with um, crochet. And I thought, oh, I could do this for her instead of buying from people because, I, like I said, I love handcrafts in general. So I just wanted my baby to look beautiful in unique items. And that was what made me start doing crochet as a business. As of today and I switched to bags because I noticed I am more um, into making bags than making clothing I'm more passionate into making passionate about making bags like when I start making a bag I can finish it in at a go instead of like wasting a lot of time to make babies so I just talk with making bags but actually what made me start was just the love of seeing my baby in crafts materials like handmade materials I can say that the business is really significant to me because um, like it has changed a lot of things in my life. For example, I can say um, I am no longer someone who can stay and say I'm bored. I, a long time ago, I could stay and not have anything to do because I don't know what else to do, especially when I was in school, I wasn't working. You know, there's nothing to do when we're on strike. You just sit at home, watch TV and stuff. But crochet has been a big part of my life in such a way that if I don't have anything else doing, I am making something, which is really, really good for me, for my mental health and a lot of things. I don't have to sit and think about stuff. Even day-to-day -day activities that usually bother someone, I barely have time to even think about them these days because I usually have something that occupies my time. And yeah, about the profitability of the business, it's... It's, it's picking up. It wasn't as profitable when I started because I, I, my husband, actually people close to me used to think I just make it for free because I charge almost close to nothing. Maybe it could be because I said, because I love doing it. So when people ask for crochet materials, I usually just charge 
little amount but these days it's really picking up and it's i can say it's profitable honestly it's it's okay <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it the materials i have i usually source from different um locations some from nigeria um okay the ones from nigeria i don't usually get them at the moment but mostly from china um from um, turkey those are the two major countries i source from materials from maybe in the nearest future i would like to get from other places but at the moment i just get from china and um, turkey and i use like agents to help me get them down to nigeria honestly i would just say we just go with the flu because um this is something we can't control no matter what you do life must go on and the dollar exchange rate is not getting better anytime soon so we just go with what we have available most times when we have an increase in prices of the materials we sell what we do is just inform the customers the prices have changed so you can no longer have them in the previous um, prices the prices is so so and so now and if they are fine with it we go ahead to like sell at the price or make products from this materials but if they are not okay with it then we have to just um, leave it but honestly it's not been easy i would say we are just doing what we can because i can say for months the year before it was really bad last year it was actually okay for me because this is something that is an online business it's not like something that people have to come and see it's something that they go through my page and see so wherever you are whatever the condition of the country is if you're interested in this thing you'll be able to make it so last year was actually okay for my business it wasn't so bad unlike the year before that there was lockdown honestly the year before it was terrible i think for almost all the lockdown period i barely even do anything i wasn't even in the i, I had no inspiration to make anything i could see people posting and doing stuff i just couldn't I had no inspiration so my page was just dormant for the whole of the lockdown period i didn't make a single thing thing till until it was over so last year it wasn't so bad for me as a business it wasn't bad people tend to like so patronize or go for things that are not readily available to them i don't think it's because of lack of quality i just think it's because of lack of trust because there are a lot of Nigerian products that are of good quality, even more than um, foreign ones. But then I think it will just boil down to choice, actually. A lack of trust aside, maybe choice. Some people prefer to go for certain other things than some other things. As for my own business, I don't think someone will say um, crochet items are of low quality. The thing is, I use good materials. So whatever I make will come out as a good product. So um, that is just a misconception among people. Made in Nigerian products are actually really good. Some, let me not say all. <laughs> so some of the made in Nigerian products are actually really good. Customer feedback from when I started to now, it is really amazing. Because um, when I started, I could barely get like customers back to back. I didn't have the buying audience. I didn't have the audience. So most people that will buy from you are just people that are close to you. So as a then, whatever you, whichever feedback you get from people, you might not really trust it because there are really people close to you. And you might feel they're just trying to butter you up and just tell you what you want to hear. But at the moment, you've, um, I've met so many people that I don't even know, people from outside Nigeria who are getting my things and their feedback are really heartwarming and really great. So I think the customer feedback now is much more better than when I started. The materials I use, the ones I get from Nigeria give me a different result from what I get from abroad. So it depends on what I'm trying to achieve at the end of the day. What I want, if the Nigerian products will make it good for me, then Nigerian products I'll go for them. If it's the foreign one, I want a results that the foreign products will be better for, then I go for the product the foreign one. But the problem is just that Nigerians don't have a lot of 
um, options to choose from. They just have certain kinds of material. So is it that you're going for them or not? But the foreign ones have lots of options to go for. So you know you have many choice here. Oh, in the course of doing my business, I can see that my biggest achievement will be getting to meet the, uh, meet the Vice President of the country, Mr. Yemi Oshimbajo, and his wife also, Mrs. Um, Dolapo Oshimbajo. So that will be my greatest achievement so far. Um, actually, I was invited by the wife of the Vice President to um, her home. The very that's our very first meeting she invited me to her home because she actually took a liking to what i was doing on instagram and i can't really see i can't explain to you how happy i was to get the invitation and then after that we got invited a lot uh, me and other handcrafters um, got invited for an event she organized for handcrafters in nigeria so it was during this one of the meetings that i got to meet the vice president as well I'm not satisfied with the way it is actually but I'm not in the place I was like a while ago so I can see I'm making improvements and um, I'm quite happy with what I have now but I'm not really satisfied I'm aiming for more in the nearest future in the nearest future I think the plan I have is first to have um, like a permanent store instead of you know moving from one place to another just some place I'll be more comfortable with and I will not be so stressful on my business. And also, my next plan will be to like open a school, a handcraft school. So that's what I'm planning next. In the past, I don't think Nigeria like ha accepted the concept of handcrafts much in the past. But in the coming years, let me say from the beginning of the pandemic and two or three years ago to, to, to this day, I can say that Nigerians are more accepting of handcraft because a lot of the youths these days have finally realized that getting a certificate in a university and maybe doing masters or all might not guarantee you doing working in a big business and you know earning a lot of money and a lot of people are actually going back to what they are naturally skilled at you know what they're really good at and then making it into a living which is really good so you can see a lot of people with master's degree doing something like beading, makeup, just a lot of handcrafts, which is really good. So I can say in the present day, Nigerians are more accepting of the handcrafts. The advice I will give to um, entrepreneurs or like upcoming entrepreneurs is um, first is to not depend like completely on um, your certificates because as I'm speaking to you I am a lawyer I have a master's in law as well and I'm not completely saying oh because I'm a lawyer I have to like go to office and do do I go to office I took a break. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm currently on a break too, but I do. And at the same time, that has not stopped me into pursuing something I'm good at. So I think the advice I'll give to upcoming entrepreneurs is like, there's nothing that is guaranteed. You get, so especially if you're not doing a professional course, as a lawyer, even if you, do, you don't work in an office, you can set up something that is just you which is not bad but especially if you're not doing a professional course um, you can actually do your is actually very very good advisable go to school get all the certificates you can but 
at the moment i think skills acquiring skills is actually i i actually say they are one of the one of important life um this thing is to acquire a skill regardless of the type of skill but make sure you're good at something that you can actually help yourself with um being a crocheter has really helped me in such a way that it doesn't have to be um a way of income for me it's a way to actually improve my mental health it's a way of bonding for me and my kids like my daughter has like um picked interest and she's six by the way she just turned six two weeks ago she's six so she can't really do much but she has interest in like oh mommy i want to make this i want you know it's just a way for me to bond with her i can sit down teach her you know, just spend some time with her so acquiring a life skill like it's not some uh, it's not something that has to be just an income to you so i think as an inter um upcoming intro just make sure you have a skill and you can turn this skill into something very helpful to you you understand and then another advice i can give is make sure you you, you improve yourself there is no time to stop learning no matter how good you are there is always something to learn you understand so um like i said i mentioned about meeting the wife of the vice president she is very good at crocheting and she's very good at knitting she she has she has like a lot of experience doing all these things more than i am in fact before i was born she has been doing this thing. yeah but the moment the, one of the one in one of our meetings like our show and tell with her she showed me one of her you know she was making a rug with yarn so she showed me how to make them which i didn't know she showed me and i was like okay fine i have something i will show you and then i showed her how to do some and she was like wow in all her years she didn't know that someone could do that oh and she was she was really happy i i if i have a video of that on my page you know she was like so there's no time to stop learning which is what my point at the moment there's no time to stop learning so you can always always improve on yourself don't think okay because people are telling me oh i'm good and this is then that's the full stop for me no you can always do something better or make what you're doing into something else you know always just try to challenge yourself and be better at what you're doing and um another advice will don't expect the money to come immediately <laughs> don't expect the money to come immediately honestly the money won't come immediately in fact the first few times you start working is going to be really difficult you will think of quitting you think of doing so many things but when when you like show up every day try your best and improve yourself you see that you find you you eventually achieve what you're trying to achieve and also um, another advice because someone is doing better the moment they start doesn't mean you have to do you will be better the moment you start it just take process for some people some people are very lucky that the moment they start they are already where they want to be while some you have to take extra effort you have to take time so you have to know your place work with what you have gently and consistently you get to where you want to be I think um, in the recent years, the government have been trying with creating loans for individuals that are interested in making, you know, starting up into um, entrepreneurship, their entrepreneurship journey. So um, I think we can, the government can actually make like make more provisions on that as well. And then um, regarding what the youth can do for lack of capital and um, you know stuff like that um i want to say that we are at a stage in in the world now that we don't really need much to do business because one the internet has actually made everything easy for us honestly it has made a lot of things easy for us and we can't always start where we want to be we can just start somewhere so um i like i told you i started with like i just got my hook and yarn and when i actually told my husband oh i want to sell this he wasn't really you know into it because he felt what will you do with this but i, I just had the passion i didn't have a lot of money then to even do anything but i just had the passion 
And this is something that a lot of people didn't really believe in then. They didn't really believe, even when I said, and I was telling people, oh, this is what I do, can you patronize me all? And, oh, it's fine. Like, I wasn't getting any support. Like, honestly, I, I will tell you this honestly, no support actually. Even when I show people, my daughter was a very chubby, fair baby. So she's the kind of baby that actually get, catches people's attention. So what I did was I modeled most of the things I was making on her. So anytime she wears stuff, like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. You have a beautiful daughter. I'm like, thank you. I actually make them. You know, I didn't expect people to buy immediately because they thought it was beautiful. Fine, it was beautiful, but they didn't really have the belief that, oh, this should be worth this amount. So if people think, if people don't believe you right away, or it's okay, you can actually just work more to make them believe in you. That's just the thing. So um, as a problem of capital and stuff, all I think depends on um, your hard work. No one will want to give you money if you're not even doing anything at first. Simply because you have an idea. Who wants to waste their money on somebody? We all have ideas. So when, when you don't put the idea in motion and people see your efforts and what you're doing, nobody invests in, in, in what you're doing, even if, it's in, even if it's government loans and stuff. The thing is, you have to work on yourself. That is just the basic work on yourself. Then if you get this money, just start from somewhere small and better yourself as you go. The internet is there to help you. Simply create an account and maybe invest on um, learning how to, you know, manage your page. Because not just posting pictures, people like to see things that are beautiful, even if it's on the internet, beautiful things. So you have to invest on knowing how to post, when to post, how to do this. So once, uh, one at a time, one thing at a time, my page wasn't as beautiful as it was before. I paid for, photo um phone photography class and it was online i paid for so many things just to make sure i'm like doing what i want to do and it's not at once i didn't pay for everything once at a time like i said paid for this one once i'm good at it okay fine let's see what next to do to improve what i'm doing just one step at a time and you can you will see that honestly everything will be much more easy for you you understand so you don't have to like start with huge sum of money get the best packaging box get the best if your product is quack you'll be left with your quack products and the good packaging and everything but once you better yourself your bags or whatever you're doing food whatever is nice and good even if your packaging is just a simple packaging people will patronize you and from what you're getting from this you can actually improve and better yourself so there are a lot of things you can actually do rather than wait for governments to help you uh, get loan there are times i've considered getting loan actually because i was thinking okay if i could do this for my business it's going to be big and but then on second thought i'm like oh well let me just wait time will come you understand and then try something else and you'll see that Things are actually moving just according to plan. There are a lot of challenges actually, and I still face them till today. Um, the most, um, let me say, the, the serious one would be sourcing materials. Yeah, so um, considering the dollar rate and stuff, you can get materials very cheap. But before you get them into Nigeria and to your own place, honestly, you would have paid double of what you've paid initially. You pay double, sometimes even triple. So you can see you get something cheap. Instead of um, getting more out of it, you're trying to just add just a little bit so that people wouldn't think it's um, expensive because shipping fee, honestly, is just so much in Nigeria. and because of the shipping fee as well we lose a lot of customers that actually want to buy from us another challenge would be um you know people to just appreciate what you're doing to value what you're doing so i have customers that come I'm like oh this is really beautiful i'm like thank you you're already happy someone is complimenting what you're doing it's beautiful I'm like, thank you how much does it cost mm -hmm. for you i can give you a, like 20k sometimes you even try to calm down because of the attitude of the person you know the person that came Someone actually said, wow, is it that expensive? I thought it was like 6,000, <laughs> you know, so just someone to appreciate. So sometimes you try to like make them understand, oh, this is actually made from with hand from scratch. Like you don't use any material and it takes time 
to actually do this. Uh, I know, but still. So, you know, just people that value what you do to just understand that this is not something that should be cheap, even though it's handmade. The fact that it's handmade is what even makes it what, what it is. Thirdly, I would say time, time management. That is really an issue because crochet as on its own is really time consuming. It's something that you have to use your time for and uh, at the same time you have other things you're engaged with you know family other job other things even the business aspect of it you still have to um you know attend to dms you still have to attend to comments you still have to make content to post on all your social so just time management is really really an issue my inspiration for not giving up on um, my work, despite all the challenges I face and I'm still facing, would be I have a dream and I would like that dream to be achieved someday. I don't really have a specific time that I've planned for it to be achievable by then, but then I have a dream and it's a dream that, um, you know, I own a store where people can come in and pick what they want to be rather than just, you know, going to my page and searching for whatever they want to show me then I make for them. I just have a store to be a wild, worldwide known brand and I know people would, I would definitely face challenges and I have to push through those challenges to get to where I want to be. So if I don't wake up every day and put in the effort, how will I achieve it? So definitely I have to put the effort. So. I want my dream to be achieved. So regardless of what challenges, I have to just find solutions for the challenges and then keep moving forward. So there is nothing in life worth achieving without facing challenges, nothing. Regardless of what, as in we, do, we didn't just wake up and today we are, we, we are at the position we are. We face challenges right from when we were children and whatever you're going to do, you will still face, face challenges. So whatever you face challenge for, you just have to find solutions and ways to just overcome the challenges and then move forward. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to achieve now, to make my dream come true. On that note, we have come to the end of this episode of Showcase. As usual, we hope you found it interesting and inspiring. We'll be back next week with another mind-blowing package. I'm Nefisa Abdelal. Thank you for watching.